My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the previous episode, we had left Muna 4 on its way out of uh, the moon's sphere of influence on its way back to Kerbin with a bounty of impact science. And we'll be returning back to that uh, soon enough in order to see whether I can get that thing back down to the surface so that I can recover the science. Uh, but before we get to that right now, we do have some station construction to do. And uh, I've noticed here that I'm having a little bit of trouble with uh, attitude control. It's very, very sluggish. I've added a lot of mass thanks to that big orange can full of fuel up there at the top. So uh, Bill's going to EVA out here and uh, reappropriate some of these uh, RCS thruster blocks. Yeah, I have these uh, thruster blocks here on the fuel module that I added last episode. Um, that was here just for docking this thing. They're no longer necessary. So we're going to uh, we're going to swipe them all. There's four of them here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to move them down to the uh, very aft end. I've decided this end now is the uh, back end of my space station. And we're going to reattach them down here, and that's going that should help with maintaining attitude control for this particular station. But that's not the main thing I want to do. The main thing I want to do is actually attach a docking port down here at the end so that I can attach further modules down here. So uh, Bill's just going to hang on because he's not going to be able to do this by himself. And we're going to send out Bartner. And Bartner is going to be our Sherpa. And what does every Sherpa need? An oversized backpack. So what we're going to do is we're going to send him up and we're going to grab one of these uh, KIS external storage containers. Now both of these two containers have parts in them. And uh, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to empty, move the parts from one container to the other. So we'll open up this particular inventory. See there's quite a lot of parts in there. And then we'll move Bartner over to the other one. And I'm going to need an empty container because we've got some big parts coming down there. So And they won't fit into Bartner's inventory. Oop. Okay, there's not going to be enough room. So we'll move over what we can. And then we'll have to take the other parts and just attach them to the side of the station for now. Um, it's kind of interesting. The whole moving parts between containers and actually picking up these containers and moving them about, you don't need an engineer for. Notice that Bartner is another engineer. So Bartner uh, can attach things to the side of stations. That requires a tool. So there are things that non-engineers can do with Kerbal inventory system, but the one thing non-engineers can't do is use tools and attach things like Bartner's doing here. Anyway, with that accomplished, Bartner's going to go back and grab this empty storage container. He doesn't seem too displeased with his load. So what we're going to do is we're going to move him up. There was a large KIS storage container that came up with the last station module. So we're going to go up there, and in there we have a 2.5 meter adapter and a 1.25 meter uh, docking port. Okay, so, oh wait, I gotta open up the inventory for the, uh, for Bartner's backpack. Move that down there and we'll move over the adapter and, oh, oh, it's too big. It won't fit in there. Okay, uh, oh, I was really kind of banking that that would fit in there. Well, hang on a second, we can still try with the docking port. Let's open up that inventory again. And see if we can at least move the docking port over. Yep, that goes over without an issue. And uh, Bartner will get rid of his wrench while we're at it. He doesn't need that anymore now that he has his fancy dancy electric screwdriver. Now, okay, here's the plan with the docking port because it yeah, definitely will not fit inside, or not the docking port, I'm sorry, the adapter. It definitely will not fit into that smaller container. So I'm going to just drop it here and then Bartner's going to push it down. That's going to be the plan. Do I seem to have issues? I don't know, maybe I'm pushing something wrong, but I, I can't just drop stuff. So last time what I did is I tried to attach it to something that it can't attach to, and then ended up it just being free there. That, that should do it there. And then Bartner's going to go up to the top and give this thing a little bit of a nudge uh, down towards where uh, Bill is, and then hopefully we'll be able to stop it and grab it down at the other end. 
Okay, there we go. So we'll just let that move on downwards. Hopefully it won't hit anything on the way down. <laughs> um, this gives me a mod idea, actually. Here, here's a mod idea. I don't know, maybe this mod exists, but I think it would be really cool if Kerbals could uh, still use their thruster packs while uh, hanging on to something because that would allow you to attach like a ladder bit or something like that that you could hang on to this piece with grab onto that and then use the thruster pack to shuffle it about okay now we got to stop it stop no he's not under it get under oh no oh wait we can grab it grab it put it over there let it, i don't you don't worry about attack just ah come on i'm trying to sort of get it in there right but if I just, ah, I lost my opportunity. Let's go down there and get it. Um, if I just grabbed that, I bet you it would have, or just tried to attach it, even if it was attached wrong, I bet you it would have uh, just stayed there. Would have been a way to stop it. Now I got to push it back up because it got too far away. Man, you know, this would be really cool use for an Oculus Rift <laughs> with KSC because the toughest thing about this is that you're working with a two dimensional screen. It's really hard to tell. What? No, I'm not. Am I under it? I don't think I'm under it. No. Oh, wait, I did. I hit it. Well, I've at least, I think, stopped it relative to the station. No, I need to get down. What makes this even more cumbersome? I still seem to be more or less directly under the station, so that's good. But what makes this even more cumbersome is the uh, the inventory container that is on the back of Bartner because that makes this makes him more awkward to move. Oh, oh, it's going up now. Okay, come on, grab it. And as we go by, I'm just gonna try and attach it. I don't care if it's right or wrong or anything. Oh, 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 I heard a good noise. Get back down there, Bartner. He had a lot of momentum. Come on, <laughs> down. Yes, uh, that mass of that container is included in Barker, so he is. Uh, he, oh, oh, docking ports are too big to fit into Barker's inventory, so I did need to have the backpack, or the <laughs> backpack. Yeah, I'll call him the backpack for uh, for that docking port anyway. So it's not a complete waste of time. Okay, so I can see it there. I think it's actually attached, but you can see it's completely upside down. But that's okay. And it took it just took a little bit of fiddling to get this thing the right way. Click. There it is. And uh, now we'll try to attach the docking port. Hopefully that will go without any major issues. See here? I do want to get it really well centered. Oh, that just clicked right in there. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna go with that that's for sure and we'll go down and we'll stick some lights on this thing on the end of this as well so that uh, you know people coming into dock will be able to to see it well but that looks really nice okay now on to phase two of this which is going to be to get rid of the transfer vehicle that brought up our fuel module so partners now put the container back into its bracket and is back inside the station we have bill on his way up here now the transfer vehicle that brought up this big module doesn't have a probe core. That was a kind of a dopey decision on my part, but that's okay because that's going to allow us to use one of my favorite KIS parts. We're going to open this inventory up and pick us some explosives. Yeah, let's drag that over. Bill's going to need some explosives. Oh, I, I grabbed all the explosives. I only need one, so we can split this up. There we go. Let's put those back. That's all he needs. All right, let's get up there. Okay, let's hang on. No, 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 I got, I got what I need. Okay, close this. Okay, let's get up there. And what we're just going to do is we're going to detach the transfer vehicle way up at the top. I've already transferred all of the fuel out of it. Um, so it is completely dry. And then we're going to push it away from the station. We're going to attach on some explosives. And we're going to blow this sucker up. All right, Bill. 
Now I've already decoupled the node here. I did that from inside the station. So Bill just needs to get himself in, get himself in there and push. Oh, push Bill. Arr. Excellent. There we are. We're moving in the right direction. That's good enough. Okay, I do want this docking port. So uh, we'll, tr we'll steal that. Oh, shoot, I forgot. Docking ports won't f fit into their personal inventory. It's too big. Ah, where's my Sherpa? Now the eagle-eyed viewer right here will be noticing that it's Bill down here getting the uh, container. Uh, this is because, well, I, I got a little bit confused and <laughs> I was in a bit of a rush because I knew that the transfer vehicle was floating away. So uh, I ended up first sending a Bartner with a ladder part thinking that, okay, two Kerbals and then I can take off the docking port. But uh, the problem with the docking port is not that uh, I can't take it off. The problem is that it won't fit in a Kerbal's inventory. So then I realized, oh, I do need this container after all. So I ended up uh, attaching the latter part to the transfer vehicle. Bartner's up there hanging on to it right now uh, with the explosives. I gave him the explosives. Bill's now on his way back down to get, or on his way back up now, but I sent him down to get the, uh, the container so that now we can put the docking port in the container. So hopefully this will all work. And you can see that in all of this confusion, I've actually, uh, this, this whole thing has drifted quite a ways from the station. But Bill is closing in on its location now. I like the way that it is slowly tumbling. If I did a quick time warp, that would actually stop the tumbling. But I don't want to stop the tumbling. I think it looks kind of cool tumbling like that. And can you, you can probably just make out Bartner hanging on for dear life as it tumbles about. All right. Okay, Bill, let's let's open up this inventory and let's get this docking port. Um, yeah, docking ports are valuable. I have a plan for it, so I want to keep it. There we go. We got it. Okay, Bill can now head back down. And then Bartner gets the wonderful job of setting off these explosives. Yeah, okay. And that uh, that's going to end up end our construction for now so let's uh, get ourselves over to Muna 4 which is on its way back into Kerbin's atmosphere. Now I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with this but I will show a few things. Number one was you might recall from last episode I was having some wobble issues uh, so I ended up using the remote tech flight computer and now I can't turn the remote tech flight computer off and I can't turn on SAS and right here I'm finding out that I cannot uh, retract this solar panel, this solar panel array. It, I, I, I don't know what's going on. Something to do with remote tech, I suppose, but uh, eventually I ended up, or I'm doing something wrong. I mean, that's, that's entirely a possibility as well. But uh, eventually I ended up having to give up on that because I was getting too close to uh, the atmosphere to worry about this anymore. So uh, we'll decouple the service module here. And we'll get ourselves onto the surface retrograde vector. I like that about the flight computer is that, oh, it's not moving. What's going, oh, wait, I have no torque. <laughs> I just got rid of my reaction wheel, so I got to enable the torque in the probe body. Now only the probe body is providing attitude control. And that is not retrograde. That is radial. There we go, retrograde. All right, let's get pointing in the right direction. We are going down pretty quickly, so... Uh, there we go. I do like that that you can pick the surface retrograde or the orbital retrograde or a target retrograde. It's really good. Okay, we're starting to get the heating effects. We are going straight down. We're not going into, well, not straight down, obviously, but we are going right into a descent. Uh, there, no going into an orbit or anything like that. That's, oh, well, as... Not surprisingly at all, the solar panels exploded. What also will likely go is that communitron antenna, at which point I will end up losing communication with this particular probe. Some of you might recall that earlier in this series, I was using a variant of remote tech called Remote Tech XF, which allows you to manipulate the antennas without a signal. Um, actually, that has been rolled right into Remote Tech, vanilla Remote Tech, so I could actually uh, use it and 
disable this antenna, but uh, Remote Tech labels it as a cheat, so that kind of got me not doing that. Uh, one other thing, too, is I am using trajectories. Trajectories was originally predicting a landing spot in that narrow strip of C uh, between this continent and the continent with the KSC on it. Now it looks like I'm landing into some mountains. That's not encouraging. That is not surprising because once I ditched that service module, I lost most of the mass of this thing, so it's slowing down more quickly than... Uh, then the true oh and there goes the antenna as predicted yeah it's slowing down more quickly um than trajectories would have anticipated so yeah that's not surprising oh now i have no communication so uh, it i don't have yeah the flight computer is not doing anything it's just aerodynamics i can see it sort of wanting to drift away a bit from the retrograde vector but it is sort of staying in the proper attitude so it seems to be okay Everything seems to be well shielded by that big heat shield, so that's good. I do have the parachutes armed, so as long as I don't land in anything that's too slopey, I should be okay. You can see I actually have the contract window open, because there is a contract. Contract is to return something to curb and surface from the moon's orbit, and this definitely was in the moon's orbit at a couple of points. Yeah, remote tech, you, know, you can now use a cheat menu to actually enable and disable antennas without a signal, but I decided not to use it. I, there's other solutions as well to deal with this non-communication issue. I could have written a very simple KOS script that would have retracted the antenna uh, as we came into the atmosphere and then re-extended it uh, once it was safe to do so. You could also use a smart part to do that too. But I decided this should be okay coming down without any control at all. Indeed, it even looks like here where I'm going to be landing doesn't even look like it's going to be too terribly sloped. So everything is looking good, and in fact, the touchdown went without incident. And although I'm calm about it right now, actually, at the time, I was pumped. When this thing finally touched down, I was I was fist pumping in the whole bit. I don't know. I was so tense about this one. I had the contract. This contract has been on my back for so long, and I finally have gotten rid of it. I was pretty excited. But uh, anyway, I, I ended up with, uh, let's see, 312 science was netted from this. Remember, some of it is going away due to, um, due to uh, strategies. And uh, that gave me a total of 404 uh, science, which I used to unlock unmanned tech for better pro bodies. You saw me eyeing this last episode. As well, the completion of that contract freed up another one. Uh, this is testing the Dawn electric propulsion system in orbit around the moon. I don't know. I mean, it will pay out uh, 48,600 curb. Well, actually, really, it'd be 81,000 curb bucks uh, once I take that penalty off, which I'll talk about next. But uh, I don't know. It just seems rather dull, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't really rock my world. I've been around the moon quite a bit lately. So uh, I think I'm going to decline this one. Now, in the past, before the 1.05 upgrade, you could just hit that decline button up there, that red X, and this one would disappear, and another one would pop in its place, and you can keep going until you saw one that you like. Now when you decline, uh, they take a one-point reputation hit. Not a big deal, but it certainly allows you not to be too selective, and, well, you know, i got a lot of other contracts that I could be doing in the meantime, and this one is going to expire on its own in just a couple of days. So what I think I'll do is just let it expire naturally and see what else pops up in its place. I also got into the strategies a little bit because I need to start uh, improving my cash flow. I need about another million curb bucks in order to upgrade the research and development center. So I deleted the appreciation campaign because that was taking 40% of my funds and converting them to reputation. So that is now gone, so hopefully I will have more funds in the immediate future, but uh, that's going to have to be for future episodes. I thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time.